This is Blaine Reed. I'm the IPM agent for Hale Swisher County up in the Texas Panhandle, and we're going to talk pretty briefly about uh, our new 4-H entomology photography contest and go through some quick guidelines on how to make this collection that we're talking about. First of all, if you can find all of our information on all of our 4-H contests right here at the Texas A&M Entomology uh, Departmental website, if you'll just look under extension and down to 4-H, it'll take you to this site right here. Of course, we can always go directly to it uh, from uh, that. But when we talk specifically about our entomology photography contest, here are our guidelines. And we do already have a video uh, that Dr. Pat Porter and our have uh, put together uh, uh, talking about how to take good insect photographs. All of our other information about our Texas State uh, official insect list with their common names, study list, all that information will be found here as well to help you identify these insects and get them organized correctly. Now let's look over the guidelines for the photography contest real quick. Here they are. Our objectives, of course, are to learn the importance of insects in your everyday life. And we want y'all to have fun when you go out and, and go for this contest. Uh, that's what it's all about uh, to learn several things. So you can register online with Texas 4-H. You need to be a Texas 4-H member and you would simply find the Texas 4-H photography contest and enter it. Uh, you'll be able to make these entries between May 1 and May 20th and the cost is $10. And this will be a, the, a statewide invitational contest. Everything will be electronic. You won't have to go to College Station and all age categories, junior all the way up through senior are eligible. As we run through those age brackets real quick, you know, if you're a junior, that's third to fifth grade this year as of uh, September 1st, 2020. Intermediate will be sixth to eighth grade and senior will be if you're in high school. And uh, during our state roundup, we will should have results for everyone by June 11th. Now, uh, prize winners will go first, second, and third. And here's a uh, link uh, again to those uh, videos to watch how to make uh, good insect photography. So what we're looking at here, here are the guidelines. And we are asking you guys to put this in uh, what, uh, any type of uh, presentation form. What we're looking at here is uh, a PowerPoint presentation. Now, some of you Mac users might have a different one, but that's okay. So you could put your photographs together in a slideshow program and then convert it to a PDF for judging submission. Now, they do need to come to us in PDF. That'll uh, shrink that file size down so that we can email these things uh, anywhere and uh, several judges across the state can look at these. Now, your first slide is, of your presentation is going to need to include your name, county, and age group. And I'm going to come back on this example uh, PowerPoint presentation. We've got our name highlighted, where we're from. We've got age and division and the year of the contest. All right, we come back to our guidelines. Uh, the second slide needs to contain the list of your arthropods. Now, of course, we're talking you can take uh, spiders and pill bugs, photos of these type guys, scorpions, things like that, because they're in that same environmental niche as insects. So we don't want to disclude those. We need to know about all of these things. So um, uh, here's your second slide should look something like this. And I'm using a junior as an example. Uh, juniors can have a max of five insects, intermediates 15 and seniors 20. And here's uh, how that goes. Look at our, our guidelines. Uh, all our authorized your collection need to be identified properly to the order. And of course, here's another link back to our state list of insects and, and how to identify those to the proper order based on dichotomous keys. Uh, arthropods appearing on our study list in Texas, that again is to be found um, back in these links, okay? Uh, to get those guys on that list, I believe we have 182. Those are gonna be worth some bonus points. So for every insect photograph you submit, there are a certain amount of points available, uh, depending on what age group you're in, uh, junior, intermediate, or senior. And uh, then uh, if they're identified correctly, 
those will be a certain uh, amount of points available. And then more points will be available for the uh, photograph quality. And then uh, there will be some bonus points if you can get those guys off our study, our common insects list in Texas, uh, identified down to species. Now you need to present one species per slide. Uh, photographs can't be used uh, twice for different species. We'll talk about that here in a second. Uh, adult insects should be the focus unless the immature stage is what's important, i.e. a boll worm or a corn ear worm, a uh, fall arm worm, a, a pest whose larva is, is really the target. And uh, you know our standard bonus points are gonna be uh, 10 for those. All your uh, standard scores should add up to 90 until the bonus points start adding in. So there's there's some incentive there to certainly find those those insects if you can. Um, so here we are, senior entry is 20, uh, intermediate 15, and five for the juniors. That's the guidelines. Let's look back here at our uh, presentation. So yes, we've got our title slide, page one, name, county, age, uh, category, year. We've got our insects identified to the order. It says first insect is Hemiptera. There is a suborder involved in this one. And while it's not listed that you have to do the suborder, that can certainly be a good tiebreaker. And it's on our official state list as an assassin bug. You know, and we've got them numbered one, two, three, four, five. Now intermediates, you're gonna to need to fit 15 on here and seniors 20. And it's okay to have two or three columns on here, but as long as they're plainly spelled out, that's a good thing. So here we are looking at our first insect, and this is a, a photograph I grabbed from a cotton field a few years ago. Uh, it is an assassin bug. It's in the order Hemiptera, suborder Heteroptera. It's a little bit fuzzy, but that's okay. We don't have to use perfect pictures while we strive for it. I was able to get this picture because this guy's kind of rare to be found in our area. I grabbed it in a hurry, and I'm, I'm kind of proud that we were able to get it. And it shows some characteristics of that insect and it's in its habitat. It's proboscis, antennae, and the insects in focus here, but it's not perfect. There might be better pictures. And I encourage you guys to take multiple pictures and, and try to get a, a real good one uh, of these guys, which can be difficult, but it can also be a lot of fun when you're looking at these guys too. Now our guidelines don't say that you have to list your uh, insect here, but I strongly suggest that this yes, to be easier on the judges that you do incorporate uh, the at least the number uh, of the insect photograph as relation to uh, your, your slide here, your number two, your insect list, just to help judges keep it straight. But what you don't wanna do is have this interfere with your photograph in any way, especially of the insect. It can be off to the side a little bit better. Uh, that would be good. Here's my second uh, slide. This one is a yellow argrup spider. And I grabbed this one. I've, I've for years tried to get pictures of these guys. They're real abundant in our crop fields late in the fall. And they usually scare me and make me jump and I never get a good picture and I've always disturbed them. But I was able to get this one. And yeah, the lighting is terrible. Uh, the insects are not perfect on here. But again, it was a fun photograph for me to take. And we've got it identified to the order that, in, that spiders belong in. It's not an insect. Um, so I'm still pretty proud of this picture and, and that's okay. And I was in a hurry and just able to grab one. In fact, this photograph is old enough. I got it with a flip phone. So it's uh, certainly something uh, uh, just to have around and, and snap pictures when you can, as you can. Um, you know, I might choose another one if I'm really another photograph, but um, it, it's still fine for juniors. Now here we are, our third insect, and this is a order Hemiptera, order of suborder Heteroptera again. But this is what we're saying when we say in those guidelines, it's okay to have more than one insect in a photograph. This is kind of what we're talking about. This was a bunch of Mozina obtuse. They actually feed on mesquite, and I uh, just snapped this picture. Uh, it's a little bit better quality, but we've got several of them here. We see uh, plenty of the dichotomous keys that put it in that order Heteroptera but there's several in a cluster doing what they do in nature. And that's, that's a pretty good capture right there. Looking at our fourth insect, uh, this was actually done with a lot better camera, but the silly thing, and it's real hard to catch a picture of a dragonfly in the order Odonata, but 
uh, and the camera kept wanting to focus on something else. And I snapped several pictures. This is the best one I got. It's a little bit fuzzy, but it's still not a, uh, the perfect picture, which we do strive for. But don't be discouraged. If you can't find the perfect one, have fun with this. Get pictures of these insects uh, where they belong. Now, this one is uh, the last one for this junior. This one is an outstanding set of photographs. This is the same uh, insect, a ligus. This picture was taken by actually Dr. Pat Porter, our specialist in Lubbock, who has the video on how to take awesome pictures like these. Yes, it's a good camera, but you can see um, it's really focused in on the eyes. Uh, you can see details about this insect structure, even though uh, some of it's a little blurry. You can see not your traditional view here, and uh, here you get your more traditional view of this insect uh, doing what they do in nature from the side. And this is how it's okay to use two or more photographs of the same insect. If you do that, don't try to cram four or five pictures in here and clutter it up uh, unless that's that's what it takes, but use these good photographs like, like this one. Now, here we are, or we're gonna talk just real quick about how to convert this into a PDF. So we are here in PowerPoint and you might need parents help with it, that's fine. So moving up here in the top left screen here on my PowerPoint, there's an auto save. I'm probably going to just turn that off, move over to file. See, I've got a couple of options here. Save as Adobe PDF. That's what I want to do. Take it just a second. Select a good name. Save it. Should have converted to a PDF. And there we go, I am looking at this PDF, saved in a great format, and where it can be printed out and viewed very easily by the judges with a very small amount of data transferring. See all the pictures chained over real well. Once you're happy with it, just save it like this and send it in to us. Uh, and that will conclude your entry in the competition. And by the way, folks, when you are saving this file, if you could go ahead and enter your name into that file, that'll help us judges keep it straight uh, when we're judging these uh, at the competition. That would be real helpful. So please put your name and county in the name of the file that you save this under. We hope you guys get involved in this uh, first year for this contest and have a lot of fun with it. This is Blaine Reed. Thank you.